Hello everyone, it's the Upform team over here and today we're going to show you guys what the difference is between forcing a response on Qualtrics versus requesting a response. Now, these are two very important features that Qualtrics provides for all of those who might be creating their surveys through this platform. And before we go into showing you guys how these features are accessed, we're just going to explain the features themselves a little bit so you guys get a better idea of on how they work. Now, when force response is basically enabled on a specific question, it basically forces the respondent to answer the question before being able to continue to the next page of the survey. Now, this is really great for when you might be creating a form with multiple pages by using the add page feature, or perhaps if you are simply have one page, but you don't want them to submit the form without having filled in everything. If the respondents then try to progress without answering any of the questions, they will see a message letting them know that they must answer the question to proceed. Request response, on the other hand, so this, unlike force response, is something that allows the creator of the form or survey to remind respondents that they may have missed the question on the form, but without requiring them to actually go back and fill it in. Now, this is also a very great way to basically increase the odds of people actually completing the survey 100%, but also without like violating any sort of privacy or perhaps if your respondents, if you don't want them to kind of know about the completion rate specifically, this can be a more subtle way for you guys to kind of require it from those who might be answering your forms. Now, so when the request response is selected and a respondent skips the question, Qualtrics will ask if the respondent would like to go back and answer the skip question before they move to the next page. If the respondent says no, well, you can't say that you didn't try simply because you already had the message pop up for them. Ultimately, if they say, if they re reject the option to fill in the missing answer, that's completely on the respondent's end and not yours. Okay, so we've explained a bit about the two features. Let's just go into them by opening one of our pre-made templates over here. We're gonna go into customer feedback for online shop. Now, as you can see, we already have a page break over here. So what we're kind of thinking of doing is basically adding another question, which we're gonna, we're gonna require. So we're gonna try to require a email so even if they don't want to put their name we can still contact the people who answer our form after they've submitted it so we're going to require this question so as you might remember you can select specific questions and on the left side of whenever you select a question you're going to see the edit question page now under the response requirements you're going to see two options what we're interested in is the ad requirements. So if we were to toggle this, as you can see, you're going to see the two features we just talked about, force response and request response. Remember that when you select either of them, it'll only apply to the question that you actually selected. It'll be indicated by this little star symbol over here as to whether it's been forced or requested. Basically, if it has any sort of response requirements, it'll be noted through this little symbol. So let's just take a look at that. And we're going to show you guys what both would look like through the preview. So let's just first do request response. We're going to hit preview next. Wait for that tab to open. Now, as you can see, oh, it looks like our page break was in the wrong place. Let me just fix that real quick by going back. We're going to move this page break below. Okay, now that should fix it. Let's preview this. Okay, so we're going to have the name, which we're going to put as Mary Jane. And for the email, we're going to try to skip it so you guys would see what the what the request response feature would look like. Okay, so we're going to hit next. As you can see, it's going to then give you this little pop-up message. There is one unanswered question on this page. Would you like to continue? So in this case, we're going to answer the question. And this time, we're going to try to click it on the phone preview on the right side to see if it shows a similar message. As you can see, it does. So both actually work on both desktop and mobile. So let's try continuing without answering. If you were to hit this, you would proceed with the rest of the test as normal. 
but just know that you can't actually press back since we didn't enable this feature. So by skipping it, you're basically already intentionally skipping the answer. So we can just do this. And there, so that's the end of it. That's how response request basically works. It's a more subtle way of asking for the respondent of the test to basically fill in a missing answer, though at the same time, it doesn't require it, require it meaning that there is still some decision on the respondent's part. Next, we're gonna go into force response. And then once you've toggled that, we're just gonna do preview again. And this time we're gonna go through the same thing once more. So we're gonna hit um, John Brown. What is your email? We're gonna try skipping this. As you can see, this one actually won't let you skip to the next question until you fill this in. So let's just fill that in really quickly. Once you filled it in, as you can see, you can then proceed as normal. So that's just how it works. Hopefully this helps you better manage any data collection you might be doing on Qualtrics. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you need any more help when it comes to Qualtrics, be sure to check out the rest of our channel using either the link on the upper right corner of this video or any of the links below. See you next time.